Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. So in today's video, we've got a really fun technique using our embossing folders to selectively emboss panels of cardstock so that we can leave blank spaces to stamp on, um, or how we can use multiple embossing folders on one panel of cardstock. Um, this technique is not new, um, but it's certainly one that wasn't familiar to me. And I really wanted to just show you my little take on it and how I found I could use two embossing folders on one panel of cardstock. I've got these three gorgeous embossing folders from Gina K Designs. I've got the Swiss Dot, the Tapestry and the Lattice one. And so let me show you how we can use those today. So first of all, you're going to need to make yourself some diffusers. Now you can buy diffusers. Uh, there are some on the market that you can buy. But I've made my own and I've basically put four panels of cardstock together. First of all, I die cut the oval from the center of all four panels, making sure they lined up. And then I kept the ovals and glued them together as well. So there's four of those there. I've done exactly the same with the heart. So again, four panels of cardstock, four hearts that were cut from those panels, and then I've glued them all together. So that's how you make a diffuser. I didn't really want to show that on camera because I thought it'd be quite a, a laborious process. Um, and all you're doing is cutting a die cut and a shape from a panel. So it's not too complicated to do, but I really want to show you how I've used them and how they work. So that's going to be the focus of today's video. And then we're going to make four cards at the end all completely different styles so I really think there'll be something for everybody whatever your card making style is. So I'm just bringing in my Sizzix Big Shot machine and now depending on your die cutting machine and depending on the thickness of the cardstock that you use you might need to just play around with the plates on your particular machine until you get the right pressure. It took me a few attempts to find out what worked for me uh, and I am using 2D embossing folders today and the cardstock that I used to make the diffusers was 300 GSM. It was the Craft UK brand of cardstock so uh, that was just a good reference point if you have the same kind of embossing folders and die cut machine as me. So all you want to do first of all is I've got my base plate and my thin die adapter. I've placed a piece of cardstock in the embossing folder and then I've put my diffuser on the top of the embossing folder and then I've added my cutting plate to the top of that. And I'm just going to run that through my die cutting machine now. So where the gap is in the diffuser, where the heart shape is, that is not going to emboss. So you can see now when we open that up, uh, we've just got a lovely um, trellis effect on the front and then we've got that lovely heart that's kept blank. Again, play around with the different designs of embossing folders that you've got. It will look slightly different depending on the embossing folder you use. If it's heavily patterned, like the tapestry folder that I've got, um, you won't get a very defined heart shape. So that's something to bear in mind when you're running um, a panel of cardstock through on a diffuser. So next we're gonna use the heart shape uh, diffuser that I've created and I'm just kind of working out where I really want that on my card front. Uh, so I kind of play around with it a little bit and I decide to go with it down the bottom. Again, I've just got my base plate, my thin die adapter, and then a cutting plate on the top. And you can see when we remove that from the embossing folder, there's a couple of little bits of lines that we perhaps don't want there, but you've got that lovely heart shape. And I'm gonna show you how those lines disappear and you wouldn't even know they were there. So to really define the heart shape, I'm bringing a out the dies that I used to create the diffuser. These are the Hero Arts Infinity dies, and I'm just pulling out the same size as the diffuser, and I'm just gonna line that up around the embossed area. So I'm just removing my thin die adapter, and I'm gonna be using my impressions pad here. So I've got my base plate, a cutting plate. I'm just gonna tack that heart die in place using some low tack tape. This is the mint tape from scrapbook.com, and then I'm able to just flip that over. I've added my rubber mat and then my impressions pad and then I'm just going to run that through my die cut machine and you'll see you've now got that lovely defined embossed heart and those extra lines have completely gone. So that's a little trick and tip to bear in mind when you're using diffusers. If you really want to define the shape, rerunning that through will remove any embossed lines that you don't want. So I'm just going to repeat that process now using the tapestry embossing folder and for this one I'm going to use the oval diffuser that I've created. So again make sure that your card is nice and straight in your embossing folder and then the diffuser goes on top of your embossing folder so the embossing folder is closed. And then you get this lovely embossed panel and that lovely blank space where you can stamp your message. 
So I'm just going to do the same with the Swiss Dots embossing folder and I've placed the heart diffuser on the top and this time I'm going to show you how you can use two embossing folders so you can create two textures on the same card panel. So we've got our heart shape there and now I'm going to come back in with the lattice embossing folder and then again I'm just going to add the diffuser on the top. Now you want to line the heart up with the heart on the diffuser. So you want to make sure that the dots are in the um, are lined up with that heart shape because obviously anything outside of that is then going to be put under pressure and have the different embossing texture on it. And then you can see you've got that lovely two-tone embossed panel. And I just think this is such a great technique. There are so many different variations you could create depending on the embossing folders that you've had. So give it a go with what you've got in your stash. I'm sure you'll be able to create some beautiful panels. If you do get any embossed marks or lines where you don't want them, just go over them with your bone fold or score tool and it will just remove them. It will just push them out and you won't even know they were there. So that's just another little trick if you do find that you get any marks. Particularly when you are just using one diffuser on its own, um, that's when the tendency to kind of crease the cardstock seems to be. Uh, so just something to bear in mind. So now we're going to turn these panels into cards and I'm using this gorgeous magenta ink, uh, pretty colour inside, it's from Stamps by Me. I've just got a little blending tool from Alina Crafts and I'm just um, going over that panel lightly uh, in the centre and then a bit more harder around the edge just so that it's got a little bit of definition. I've got a little um, tub of um, pre-stamped coloured images that I've got that I've made along the way and I haven't used them so I've just pulled this out today to try and find the perfect image and I decided to use this really cute cat from the Cat Capers stamp set from Funky Fossil Designs. So I've just pulled that stamp set out so that I can pick one of the sentiments and I decided to go with the sentiment, you are the cat's whiskers. And to just get it to fit nicely at the top of my card, I am going to trim this sentiment in half. I'm just using my sharp cutter be scissors here so it would be easy to put back together if I want to use it in a long line again. I do just stamp the sentiment on a scrap of paper just to make sure that it's nicely lined up. This is also a great way to test the colour that you want to stamp in because I thought I was going to stamp in the magenta colour today but I decided actually the Versafine Onyx Black ink looked a little bit more crisp and it just stand, stood out against all the pink that's already on the card front. I'm just going to trim my panel down. I'm using A6 card blanks today. Um, so I'm just trimming this down so that it just fits and I want to have a nice border around it. And then to add a border, I'm just going to use a scrap of paper again. And I'm just going to run the magenta ink pad all around that card blank front so that I've got a lovely matte layer that's going to match the magenta heart that I've already got on my card front panel. So I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that. I've got some Kalau glue in that little mini glue bottle. And then once that's stuck down, I'm going to pop my cat on some foam tape. And then I'm going to add a few little gems just to finish off the card. So that's the first card for today. If you're not into cute animals or critters on your card fronts, then the next few cards are going to be for you. But I really wanted to use the cat today because I just thought it matched the heart really well. So for the second panel, this is the one that we've used two embossing folders on. I'm coming in with some Distress Oxide. I've got dried marigold and then I've got saltwater taffy and I'm just working on my blending mat. I'm using my Funky Fossil blending brushes and all I want to do is have slightly more ink around the edges, fade it off into the centre and then for the heart I'm going to bring in the um, diffuser that we've made and I'm just going to use that as a stencil just so that I kind of can get the saltwater taffy ink just in that centre part. Now, when I lift this up, I just think it's just a bit too pale. So I decided to come back in with some worn lipstick and I'm just going to add um, a bit more heavier ink around the edge of the heart just to really define the shape. And then I'm going to fade that off into the center as well. I just really wanted that heart to really stand out on the card. And I really kind of like the white shading around the edge. It just kind of gives it a little bit of a shadow look. I'm just going to use my corner rounder punch to uh, round the corners diagonally opposite each other. It just adds a little bit of a fun effect to the card front. And then I'm going to use these butterfly dies from Alina Crafts. I've got that gorgeous word love. Uh, that was an older Funky Fossil die set. And then I've got this older Funky Fossil stamp set that I just wanted the word you from. So this sentiment's going to read love you. And I'm just going to get all that stuck down. I'm just using some liquid glue again and just keeping the panel nice and flat 
uh, to the card front here. And this is where the diffusers really kind of um, are great. If you don't want to add any bulk or dimension to your cards, perhaps you're posting it in the mail, using a diffuser means that you can add a sentiment without having to add a matte layer or any kind of frame tape or bulk to the card. You can keep it nice and flat and still have lots of lovely texture on the card without the need for lots of layers. But I'm just adding a sentiment here. I've popped that on some liquid glue. I am going to pop my uh, sentiment U on some frame tape. I've only glued the body of the butterfly down so that there's some dimension in the wings and then I'm just going to add a few more little gems just to finish off the card and that's the second card finished for today so really really quick and easy. Now if you like adding a little bit of stencil butter or texture paste to your embossing folders this next card is for you. So I've got these two stencil butters from the crafters workshop. I've got terre verte and eggplant. So the terre verte is like the green colour and then the eggplant is the purple. And I'm just using my finger just to carefully add green to all those raised bits that are leafy or foliage elements. I'm then coming in with the eggplant and I'm just going over all the little raised dots or flowers or um, grapes or whatever you want to call them, whatever they are on the tapestry folder. And then I can just use a little bit of water just to clean off my fingers on my desk. It's really easy to clean up. So I kind of thought I was done with the background panel there and I bring out this petite geranium stamp set from Gina K Designs. I really want to use the sentiments from it. There's a really great selection of sentiments and I'm going to use the thanks a million. And I'm going to just stamp that in some VersaFine Onyx Black ink right there in the centre of that lovely unembossed oval. But then I think, the, I just kind of felt like the card was really lacking something. So I brought back in the diffuser, the oval part, and I'm just going to use that to cover over the sentiment. And then I'm just going to use some shaded lilac, and I'm just going to add some of that Distress Oxide all over the card panel. Again, I'm making sure it's a bit darker at the edges, and then a bit more lighter in the centre. And I kind of felt like that just finished off the card a little bit better. I'm going to add a black matte layer to the card here. And again, I'm just using the Kalal glue to stick that down. And then once that's all stuck down, I'm just going to trim off the excess black card stock. I'm then going to attach it to a card blank, again using liquid glue. And then just to finish that off, I'm going to add a few little gems from scrapbook.com. And I really kind of felt that the shaded lilac distress oxide just kind of really finished off the panel a little bit better and I love how you've got that open flat oval space in the center just to stamp your sentiment so that's the third card finished so I really hope that you kind of like the way that I'm turning these into cards and I hope that it's given you a little bit of inspiration of course there's loads of different techniques that you could use with these so these are just basic ideas I really wanted to focus on the technique today so for the fourth and final card, I'm going to use the gorgeous Petite Geranium stamp set and I'm going to use the flower for this one. So I'm just going to ink that up with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I'm just stamping it on a scrap of cardstock and I am going to colour this with my Arteza colour pencils. Now it's not something I feature very much on my channel colouring, uh, but I'm just going to show you a little bit of how I colour uh, one of the flowers here. So I've selected some pinks and purples, I've tested them at the top, made sure that I'm happy with the colours. And then how I colour is, I use the lightest first, I then come in with the second darkest, and then I go back in with the darkest in the centre. And then if I feel like I've missed any areas, I'm just going to go over it with the lighter colour. And I've done that all over the flower, off camera, and so there's the finished coloured panel. I'm not a colorist at all and I'm not very good at coloring but I do like to take my time sometimes I think that is the challenge with coloring it is time consuming so you've got to have the patience for it and sometimes I'm in the mood and sometimes I'm not so I'm just going to fussy cut that with my cutter B scissors and then I'm going to kind of work out where I want the placement now it does kind of hide the heart and I did kind of have to wrestle with myself on that one because I really wanted the heart to show. But in the end, I decided that it didn't matter. I was going to take away a little bit more of the white from the stamped image. So I've just brought my cutting mat and my craft knife in and I'm just going to remove that excess. And I thought maybe once I'd done that, a little bit more of the heart would show. I just neaten it with my scissors. And then I've got this blending brush. It's got a little bit of seedless preserves distress oxide left over on it. And so I just decide that I'm going to add a very light bit of ink blending just to all of the raised embossed areas, which really did kind of emphasize the flat heart shape in the middle. Um, and it just added a little bit of extra interest to the card front. I really wanted to keep this card very clean and simple to show off the design of the embossing folder. But I do just think 
added a little bit of ink, just really added something a little bit extra to this card. So I've gone ahead and stamped my sentiment in the Versafine Onyx Black Ink. It just says, hello friend. And then I've added a little bit of liquid glue to that to attach it to a black matte layer. And then I'm just going to attach that to my card front as well. The flower I'm going to pop up on a little bit of foam tape. Um, I've got this foam tape. I think this is a uh, foam tape from Craft Stash, but anyway, I'm just using my long bladed scissors just to trim that and add a little bit of foam tape all over the little back parts of this. Of course, you don't need to add foam tape if you wanted to keep it flat. You could just glue it down flat, uh, but I do like to add a little bit of dimension to my cards. Again, I'm just coming in with these little gems from scrapbook.com. And then that is the fourth card finished for today. So I really hope that it's given you a little bit of inspiration of how you can use your embossing folders with diffusers that you can make at home and how you can then use those cards with diffused embossed elements on them to turn them into really fun cards really quick and easy cards um, with a variety of different designs you know if you like the cute and fun critters or if you just want to keep it more classy or if you want to go a little bit mixed media you can do a little bit of everything with embossing folders and I think that's what really makes them so versatile so thank you so much for joining me today I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video please don't forget to like and leave me a comment if you've enjoyed it I'd really love to know which card's your favorite if you've tried this technique before and as always if you'd like to see more from my channel then please consider subscribing it really does mean a lot so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care